now we know what to do about strong acids and strong bases. We know how to deal with weak acids. I wanted to show you an example of a weak base. Um, and there are going to be a couple parts of this that are going to be important to us. Um, you know, that, that are going to be a little different than what we had to do before. And I want to leave the board down. It's a straightforward problem like the ones that we've seen before. 0.1 molar solution, except now we have acetate. Acetate is a conjugate base of acetic acid. All right, we're given the KB. Now I'm going to tell you one of the things I want to, I want to get hung up on or I want to hang up on right now is the fact that the KB, all right, the KB is not generally a value that is provided. It's something that you're going to have to calculate. And we're going to talk just a little bit as we get a little bit further through this. We're going to talk about how it is that we might determine um, the KB from the KA uh, because the two are related um, in a very straightforward uh, chemical equation or mathematical expression. Um, we also need to understand how to write the equation for a weak base. The acid's fairly straightforward, but the weak base, not so much. Now, one of the things that's going to it's going to be nice or different about this about this experience where we're you're learning remotely is that. Um, you know, you're going to be able to pause that video at any time. So if you're like, okay, I need to, you know, I really need to like write that down and he went a little bit too fast, just pause the video and just go back a little bit and then you can write things down or, or take notes. And, and it's important that you are taking notes through this process. I'm providing my lecture notes as well as these videos. Um, it's important that you're taking some notes so that you learn something from this. So let's start with acetate. First thing, we've got to write the balanced chemical equation. Remember, that was the first step in solving any of these equilibrium uh, problems. And we're going to have acetate, three, CH3COO minus. All right, and it's going to be acting as a base. Now, the thing about it is, that base has to have somewhere to get its protons from. So the way that we're going to write the expression for weak bases is that we're going to react them with water. And water is going to act as the acid to donate the proton that the base is going to um, take up or take in. So this is going to produce CH3, COH, acetic acid, base, conjugate acid, acid, conjugate base, and water is acting as an acid, so this has got to be a base, and the base is, after that's given up one proton, what's left is hydroxide ion. Now we just do it exactly the same way that we've done all of these others. We're going to do an ice table. So water, remember, pure liquid. We don't care about it. Drops out of the equilibrium constant expression. So we're just going to put a line in that column in all the different spots. But we start off with 0.1 molar um, acetate, and we start off with none of those two things. It's possible the problem could tell you that you have one of those. Okay, so we have 0.1 molar acetate and 0.1 molar acetic acid. In which case, you would have to fill some value into that spot. But that's not the case for most of the problems and it's not the case here. And some of that um, acetate is going to take protons from the water. So we're going to get minus x plus x and plus x. So here we're going to get 0.1 minus x, x and x. Equilibrium concentrations, we can now go and write that equilibrium expression. So Kb equals concentration of acetic acid at equilibrium, concentration of hydroxide ion at equilibrium over the concentration of acetate at equilibrium. What's left over when we get to equilibrium? All right, that's what goes into this expression. And then we get 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10th is equal to x times x over 0.1 minus x. And now we're at that same point where we were at before when we had the weak acid. And we said, okay, this is a weak base, so we don't expect it to really gain that many protons. So we can say, or we can make the assumption that x must be much, much less than 0.1 molar. And if that's the case, 
then that X goes away. And if that X goes away, it makes our life a whole lot simpler. Because now we have an expression that's just 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10th equals X squared over 0 0.1. We're only going to have to take a square root. That is so much nicer. So we get five, this, the X is going to be 5.56 times 10 to the minus 11th equals X squared. And X, which is equal to the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide ion, is going to be 7.456 times 10 to the minus 6th power. Super, all right? If we know the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide, we can calculate not the pH directly, but the pOH. Minus log of the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide. And in this case, the pOH is going to be 5.127. And you might say, Dr. Ramsey, how are you figuring out or determining how many significant figures? I'm going to be honest. I think we need to focus on some things that are other than significant figures for the rest of the semester. I mean, I, I just think there are better ways that we need to be spending our time right now. And that is, can we actually understand the chemistry? Can we understand how to do the relevant calculations that go behind us? So, you know, I'm going to always take three or four, three or four digits. Um, if you do that as well, I mean, if you start giving me numbers that have 13 digits in them, I'm probably going to say, hey, you know, there's a little bit too much and I may take a point off. But we're going to relax significant figures quite a bit um, from here on out, just because of the circumstances. So now we know the pOH, but we know we have to determine the pH, and the pH plus the pOH add up to equal 14. So if we know the pOH, the pH plus 5.127 equals 14, then the pH of this solution must be 8.87. Now, ask yourself, does this make sense? So we have a weak base in solution, right? If we have a base, the pH should be above 7. If the pH is above 7, all right, that would give us an indication that there would be a base in that solution. And so we get a pH of close to 9. Not nearly as high as it was for the sodium hydroxide solution, but it makes sense because we don't have a strong base, we have a weak base in this case. So um, this answer makes complete sense. So, you know, if we were doing this problem and we didn't know what the answer was, we might look at this and say that makes, you know, I, w I think that I've probably done something right because the answer gets to a place where it makes, it makes some, say, some sense physically. Now, what I want to do or I want to take the last couple seconds here with is I want to go ahead and erase all of this. So we're going to get rid of all of this stuff. And I want to think about this idea of KB. And I told you before that KB won't always be given. So what we have to think about is, all right, how do we determine what it would be? And it's all going to come back to this value of KW. And I'm not going to go through why this is the case. I'm going to tell you that this is the case. And that is the KW is going to be equal to the KA times the KB as long as the acid and the base that we're talking about are conjugate acid-base pairs. So if this were acetic acid and that were acetate, this works just fine. If this were hydrochloric acid and that were sodium hydroxide, out the door, okay? So it has to be conjugate acid-base pair that we're talking about. We know that Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14th, all right? If we want to know what the Ka of acetic acid is, It'd be the Ka times 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10th. 
All right, and if you solve for Ka, the Ka should be right around 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. You may get somewhere around like 1.76 or 1.75 or something like that times 10 to the minus fifth. But it's really, really close to the Ka that we, we used when we solved the pH of an acetic acid solution. So just remember this in case you end up in a situation where it's like, okay, it's, this is a base, I need the Kb, how do I figure out what it is? We have to use this expression. Okay? So now we have handled strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base. The only thing left that is buffer, um, and buffer is going to hold off until next week. All right. Go, go start working some of those homework problems.